Hello beautiful singers, this is Valerie White Williams and Vocal Splendor Studios and today I would like to talk to you about reality TV and the audition process for singers that might be interested in trying out for TV. I personally was approached by a casting producer in season three of America's Got Talent. This was back in the MySpace days and I had a MySpace page and she found me, she believed in my talent and she worked hard to get me a private edition. Now, a lot of people don't realize that even though these shows come and they go into these cities and they do these mass open editions, there are people that do get private editions and I got one. I was very fortunate. I was able to get a private edition in Vegas. It was a closed edition so only people that were scheduled were there, mostly Vegas professionals. And I did sing my song. Um, the casting producers that listened to me enjoyed me but I didn't make it from the final cut and the reason why I think I didn't make it was because that year they were looking for a Paul Potts type of singer it's not me I'm not a Paul Potts but they ended up finding a guy like that and he won and I don't even remember his name because he was just kind of a Paul Potts clone and that's what they were looking for. The person who found me and worked with me is what's called a casting producer. And the key word to keep in mind with that is casting. Casting is what you do when you have a TV show or a musical or even a, co a commercial ad. You have casting, you have characters that you're looking for and then when you find the right people that's who you're looking for casting. Now that said, most people think of these shows as talent shows but they're about talent, but they're really about TV and having a great TV experience, which is why they have certain preconceived ideas of what types of people they're looking for for all these shows. Like we want a big everyman Paul Potts guy that you're surprised and he has this great big opera voice. Or you want this little cute little cutie doll kid that's really sweet and cute. Now that's America's Got Talent, but all the shows have a similar kind of agenda where they're looking for maybe a country guy or some blonde babe that gets kicked off early because she's a dingbat. You know, all these things are elements that make up great TV. Uh, the other thing about um, uh, all these reality TV shows is that they give you an illusion about things that aren't necessarily true. One of the things they all do is they feature all these additions in front of the judges and so you get this impression that they pulled these people right out of the line and stuck them in front of the judges. But the reality is when you see people performing in front of Simon or any of these other shows, they've already gone through three editions, two at least, to get to that point. Which is why all the people that are quote bad think are shocked because the producers go, wow, that was awesome. We loved your singing. Please wear that outfit again. I think everybody's going to love it. And so they get kind of egged on in that response and then they show up wearing that really silly outfit and singing that really awful song. And then the judges go, oh, you think you can sing? Oh my God, you should find another career. And I really personally find that manipulative to the extreme. However, um, you just have to go into these things with your eyes open. And please know that everybody who sings in front of the judge has already made it through several editions. They've already been pre-screened to that point. Now let me say also about those shows is that they do make you sign a contract that says any image that they use of you, whether you're audition or if you get on the show, they own all of it and they can use it in any way they see fit, including to display your image and your audition in an untruthful manner. And that can happen too, where sometimes they'll take an audition and they'll edit it in a certain way that the singer looks worse than they really are or they look stupid. So you have to go into it knowing that you're putting your image and your personality at risk. Now that said, there are still many benefits for doing reality TV shows. Um, besides my edition, which I found positive, I went for the experience, I've had students try out for America's, got, um, I think they've done American Idol, and I had another student who actually um, auditioned for Fox, um, what is it, ah, um, ah, Simon Cowell's new show, X Factor, I knew there was an X there somewhere, and she got all the way to the final edition with Simon, they loved her, they said, we'll call you if you make the show, she didn't make the show, however, she's doing awesome, and she's a great singer, I personally was called, actually, when when X Factor was in Seattle, 
with a personal invite from a casting producer to me and my students to go to X Factor. It was awesome. I couldn't believe it. I went, what? <laughs> She's calling me? The LA producer from LA. But unfortunately, I was on a vacation that week and I'd already made plans, so I wasn't able to change that to do the X Factor. But I think it was still a great experience for those who chose to do that. Uh, that said, um, there's certain things you need to keep in mind when you try out for reality TV. And I think I've covered some of the main issues, but let me just check my notes to make sure. First off, I think the number one thing if you want to try out for reality TV is to really research that show and their requirements. All those things should be on their website. I know when I did America's Got Talent, the whole contract is online, the audition places is online, and what they're looking for. Some of the shows, like American Idol, um, they want you to sing completely a cappella, which is much more challenging than some of the shows like The Voice, which allow you to bring a backing track. But you definitely need to know that going in. The more you can research the show, the more prepared you are to offer a great addition that meets what they're looking for. So you need to find out about what they're looking for, whether it's acapella or not. The next thing you need to work on is whatever you audition for, you need it to be amazing right away. You don't, you don't have time to warm up in these editions. They're gonna give you maybe three minutes. And if you don't state your case and show them why they need to pick you, it's, it's not over. They're not gonna wait till the good part. So you have to get right to the good part and really isolate that. If you're looking at auditioning for a reality TV, I strongly recommend you go to another person, like a teacher or a coach, to work through your material and give you feedback. Because truly, your friends and family aren't always the ones, they think you're awesome no matter what. And we've all seen that in reality TV. These people are like, oh, my mom thinks I'm amazing. And then they really weren't ready for this type of in opportunity. And of course, as we know, some of these shows will make fun of or take advantage of the less trained singers. Um, so you really, really need to be research it, know you're ready, find your quality part. Um, here's another part of the story that's really important, is what we call the backstory. When I work with the casting producer, she kept asking me, well, do you have anything inspiring or inspirational? So they really are looking for interesting stories. I think there is a bias against professionals like myself, at least in some of the shows. I think The Voice and some of the higher level shows, it's not such a bad thing. But some of the shows love to find people like, if only I could say, oh, you know, I love to sing, but my kids all have cancer and I'm scrubbing toilets so I can pay for their cancer surgeries. And I just want to be a singer. It means so much to me and I think I'm just going to cry. Now, that seems really silly, but that is a lot of what they want. They want a fun story that they can get behind, they can put you in a box, and they can market you as whatever. And I'm not asking you to make stuff up, but think about your background and what makes you unique and what could be inspiring. Illnesses really work, um, personal challenges that have overcome, people that have been hit in the neck and then they get their voice back. They love that kind of stuff. But those are things to keep in mind. Um, they are going to market you on a, a way they can see fit. And it's about marketing the TV show. It's more important than marketing you. Uh, what's the next thing? Um, write your backstory. Um, look at the contract. And the other thing is to keep in mind that tons and tons and tons of really talented singers get aren't asked to be on these shows. So this idea that they're gonna pick the most talented people is not true. I've had really awesome students do America, American Idol and they haven't gotten anywhere. And you know, it's just the way the show is. Again, they're looking for certain types and certain personalities. Another thing to watch out for some of these shows like American Idol, when they had in Seattle, they had people who were standing in line for hours. They wouldn't allow them to take any water or food into the building. So people are really tired, they're really hungry, they have to buy all this expensive arena food, which is crappy, and then they want you to do all this screaming and yelling, like, yes, yo! So, as you can imagine, after you've spent hours and hours with no food, no water, uh, haven't really eaten any food, and then you're supposed to scream and yell, you're not always in the best vocal shape. So you need to be aware of that, that it sometimes will take, and they'll kind of take advantage of you, in my opinion, to get you to do all these things. Now, that said, people can do these shows and get a great push. You just have to go into it with an open mind. Don't expect that if I'm great, I'm gonna get picked. Go for the experience. They're looking for certain types of people, not just talent. They're looking for characters that can be in the show. Um, I've had friends, I actually have some friends of mine that went 
to college with, uh, and they're in a group called Groove for Thought, and they were in the sing-off. And that show is a little more clean in that they only pick really quality groups to begin with, which I really appreciate. So it's really kind of more like the Olympics of really good singers. But even for them, they made it to number six. They were put in a box and they were told to sing certain songs and then they'd sing them and the judges go, wow, we just didn't think that was a good song choice. But that's where it gets a little manipul manipulative. However, they've had a huge push forward and so their career has definitely taken some greater strides. They have fans from all over the world now because of that show. So that's the good part about reality TV. So you just need to go in with an open mind and, and be clear about all the things that can come up. Do the research, find your very best, research the shows and have at it. Have, it, have a good time. See you next time. Bye.